Dr. Martin Sherman, we're here on the beach of Tel Aviv. Well, look, while I think there's a certain amount of logic in highlighting the positive elements of Israel, the beach, the restaurants, the culture, etc., etc., they largely miss the point when it comes to combating the delegitimization of Israel. It's a little like someone being accused of murder, rape, and arson. And in his defense, he says he's, uh, he likes classical music, he has a beautiful w wife, and he's good at science. The, 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 the answers don't address the, the allegations, they don't address the accusations. And uh, that's why I think much of it is totally, totally uh, misguided. You know, I don't want to discount, you know, as I said before, highlighting the, the attractive parts of Israeli life internationally, but I think the only way that Israel is going to regain political leg legitimization is by delegitimizing the Palestinian narrative, because you have a clash between two collectives. Uh, both have uh, opposing, mutually exclusive uh, foundational narratives, and only one can emerge victorious. As long as the Palestinian narrative is perceived as legitimate, much of the Zionist narrative will be delegitimized. And so the only way to gain political legitimization or complete legitimization of the Zionist narrative is, be, uh, is to delegitimize the Palestinian narrative and point out the, the uh, mendacious myths uh, on which it's based and to explode, expose it as the hoax it really is. Hmm. Has that been tried so far? Uh, certainly, A, not to my knowledge, and if it has, certainly not with sufficient vigor. And I'm very skeptical if this is the kind of thing that the uh, Israeli uh, officialdom is uh, eager to embrace. And, and I think that's a mistake. Why aren't they eager to embrace it? Well, I think they're, they're in the clutches of political correctness. You know, it, it depends on how you perceive your Palestinian antagonists. If you see them as a prospective peace partner or as an implacable enemy, if you see them as a prospective peace partner, perhaps you don't want to annoy them too much because that might undermine the chance of future peace. If you see them as an implacable enemy, then there are different considerations. And as I said before, I think the correct way to conceive of the conflict is a clash between two enemy collectives which have Imp uh, uh, irreconcilable uh, founding narratives and I don't think there's going to be any consensual uh, uh, res uh, resolution of the conflict, only a coercive one. And this is something I think that the Israeli official do find difficult to accept or, and certainly to, in to incorporate in their diplomatic strategy. Uh, what website can people find more about uh, it on? Your points. Uh, they can uh, they can look at my uh, institute's uh, website, um, Israel Institute for Strategic Studies. That's www.strategic-israel.org, which recently has been under attack by some uh, hostile elements. So, uh, if it doesn't come up immediately, a bit of patience until we overcome this.